Well, by now we've all heard about the young man who blew the whistle on the IRS about their intrusive surveillance program of our phone records and the internet and whatnot. This is an article about whether he is a whistleblower or a double agent. My personal opinion is he's just a whistleblower. My personal opinion is that he just alerted the American people to the intrusive policies being portrayed upon them. Now when you when you hear talk of these guys saying he's a traitor, he's committed treason, you know, we really don't know what secrets if they allege that he could divulge to the Chinese. Because the Chinese or any so-called terrorist group can't be that stupid to think that we're not looking at the internet and the phone lines. Come on, give us all a break. See how they treat us like we are idiots and that we are just totally stupid. And this is nothing that we we didn't already know and fear and suspect already that they were invading our privacy. That they were listening in. And I will personally guarantee you, <clears throat> in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't trust any one of them. I think all the sitting members of Congress basically are liars. You hear Marco Rubio, who's going to supposedly run for president, and uh, you listen to John Boehner, who's a big shot, has representatives. You talk about law breaking and treason and whatnot. We don't want them doing that. They cannot be trusted to stay out of our lives, and you know that. Let's take a look at this article here and see what the gist of it is, shall we? It is, there's going to be all kinds of propaganda out there. The champion, talking about how he was championed as a, a whistleblower and talking about how he's in Hong Kong and then now there's a backlash against him and the story's unfolding is there something more sinister or questioning his motives or whether he's a modern-day double agent hiding his action painting himself a victim of the government while, while working for the Chinese and you got Gordon Chang he thinks there's a possibility he's playing both sides in my opinion, they're trying to play public opinion against him. He didn't have to do whatever he did if he's, you know, if he knows all about hacking and how to clear his footprints and not leave a trail and how to garner information, then he wouldn't have had to come forward. He wouldn't have had to let him know anything. He would have just gave me information and whenever you think about uh, hacking you know I've even read articles and heard conversations that uh, they're saying that uh, he divulged to the Chinese that we were hacking into the computers and that's, that's another thing that they think we're all stupid about we've seen article after article after article news report after news report after news report about how the Chinese were hacking into uh, Defense Department computers this, that, and the other. And and we know, the U.S., we do the same thing. So, it's no new news that the United States has been hacking into Chinese computers. You know, we've got s stuff going, everybody's hacking everybody. Come on, give us a break. We're doing Russia, Russia's doing us, Russia's doing China, China's doing Russia. It's going on everywhere. They got teams of experts that do that stuff. Espionage, cyber espionage. Are they talking about prison for him, you know, as a traitor?
He claims to the South China Morning Post that the NSA has more than 61,000 hacking operations globally. Well, that's probably true. And that they've been hacking computers in Hong Kong and China for going on four years. Well, probably longer than that, so. And uh, this Chang guy believes it's difficult for Snowden to get the amount of data he got in such a short period of time. And then you got a statement by Mr. Eric the Lying Criminal Holder. Those are extremely damaging leaks. Yes, they're damaging because the American public got verification from a worker. That's what's damaging about it. That's what they hate about it. That's why they want this guy so bad. Because he actually verified this to us. They didn't want it to be found out. They didn't want it to be proved. And it just goes on to talk a little bit about his employment and background. And then the Chinese newspaper says he shouldn't be sent back to the U.S. because his revelations concern their national interest. Then you get the little part about how he could, he could provide the Chinese with once classified U.S. intelligence which would help the country update its understanding of cyberspace. Let's see here. Richard Haas, President of the Council of Foreign Relations, the CFR. Oh boy, we should trust them, shouldn't we? He recently treated why is the media using sympathetic word whistleblower for Mr. Snowden who leaked about the program. He broke the law and made us less safe. More propaganda. He added a whistleblower is a person who reveals wrongdoing, corruption, illegal activity. None of this applies here even if you oppose the government policy. Oh really? Really? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll look and see about Mr. Snowden here. This is just more stuff about his, who he is and different things. Talked about his family and education. You can come here and look at his career. His personal views supposedly is passionate about privacy. He left a small digital footprint. Various details about his family. He voted for a third party candidate. He donated to the campaign of Ron Paul. There's a timeline here talking about different things. Yeah, it's a reaction of the U.S. government. Let's see here. They made a request for a criminal probe. Clapper called his reckless disclosures have resulted in significant misimpressions in the media. Well, he has been fired also, I believe, from his position. Daniel Ellsberg, who was a whistleblower and leaker of top secret Pentagon papers 40 some odd years ago in 1971, said in a CNN interview he thought Snowden did an incalculable calculable service to the country and that these revelations might prevent America from becoming a surveillance state. I don't believe it'll prevent it. They're going to go full full forward. No stopping or reversing. It just people are going to be more aware if they are not asleep and if they are paying attention and if they are thinking. Ray McGovern, a retired CIA officer. 
that he agreed with Ellsberg in an interview that this this time today I'm feeling much more hopeful for democracy. Julian Assange praised him. Several political figures have praised him. Chris Hedges, Michael Moore, Glenn Beck, Matt Drudge, Alex Jones, Gary Johnson, Ron Paul, Michael Savage, Jesse Ventura. Members of Congress, let's see what they have to say. Ted Cruz. If it is the case that the federal government is seizing millions of personal records about law abiding citizens, if this were minimum restrictions on assessing assessing, excuse me, and reviewing these records, he did considerable public service bringing it to light. See that's the whole thing, bringing it to light. Some politicians have called for his arrest. Diane Feinstein, we all know about her lying. Bob Menendez, Lindsey Graham, Bill Nelson, John Thune, John Boehner, Eric Cantor, Mike Rogers, Peter King, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Oh my goodness, there is one of the biggest liars that you'll ever see on TV. And Charlie Dent. You can read about the press and the public. That is the age we're in now of the New World Order, in which they set up a web of lies and deceit, intrusions into your life. It is like George Orwell's 1984, truthfully. If you get a chance and you've never read it, you need to read 1984 and then think about the basics of what the book is telling you about that time that he's describing and, and those kind of things that were being done and he, the, the way he presents it and everything we never gave him our permission to do these things and you can look back in the videos and they've showed them before My Gosh, people need to wake up. You saw Biden, you saw Obama, when they campaigned before he was ever elected in his first term, speaking and railing against his cousin Bush about how all that kind of stuff was bad and it was breaking the Constitution and he was against it and if he got in, they were going to stop doing all that stuff and now he kept his cousin's policies didn't he yeah he kept them and signed them on for longer and ex just basically expanded them and crooked them even more than what what they were and now you're getting articles on a different note about arming the Syrian rebels and we know by their own admission like I said before, about good people being mixed in with bad people, being mixed in with Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is tied in with the CIA. Just have to do the work to find out the truth. And then we supposedly fought a war against Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And then we end up giving arms now to the rebels. And Al-Qaeda is a member of the rebels. So now we're going to be arming. Al-Qaeda, because they still want Assad. So, think about the things that we have looked at tonight, and think about this man. Has he really done anything, do you think, to breach national security, or has he just alerted you to what we already know?